Why a movie about Mary McLeod Bethune? Mary McLeod Bethune, Out of Darkness into the Light of Freedom, is a story about my grandmother. She was able to come out of one of the darkest periods in American history because of who was holding the lantern, her parents, Samuel and Patsy McLeod. They were the spark. The story of my great-grandparents is a story of faith, love, and the strength to be self-determining. The life of Mary Jane McLeod is what comes out of that story. It's almost impossible to tell her true life story without also talking about Samuel and Patsy McLeod. You see, my great-grandfather and great-grandmother were enslaved in this country, yet they produced one of the greatest American icons that ever lived. Some would say, how is that possible? Well, history doesn't record much about my great-grandparents, only of my grandmother, Mary Jane McLeod Bethune. I find it interesting that so little is mentioned of her roots, as it was her parents who gave Mother Dear, as we called her, the foundation upon which she built her life and her dreams. Her personality and natural characteristics were passed through her bloodline, her greatness DNA. Samuel and Patsy McLeod are the GPS to understanding Mary McLeod Bethune's ability to press through incredible obstacles of the past and connect her heritage to the legacy she left behind. Would Mother Dear have accomplished so many great feats were it not for the strength of Samuel and Patsy McLeod? You see, when Samuel McLeod met Patsy McIntosh, they were enslaved in South Carolina. Patsy was on the McIntosh plantation, and my great-grandfather Samuel was on the McLeod plantation. Yes, that's right. Their last names, of course, were the names of the plantations upon which they were enslaved. In order to tell the story of Mary McLeod Bethune and her lineage, her parents Samuel and Patsy, my great-grandparents, who were enslaved in this country, have to be a part of that story. Today, we spend a great deal of time and money researching why our communities, the black communities, are in crisis. We want to figure out where we went wrong and why we have not made any lasting, great progress as a community, as a people, in over 400 years. Why is it still such a struggle to get and stay ahead of the way? It is my belief that we must remember where we come from and who brought us if we're to fix what's broken. The media, our day-to-day -day encounters with the stereotypical assumptions and the vast technological environment that we live in, all tell us that black people are generally bad, dysfunctional, genetically predisposed to lower intellectual achievement, more so than any others, especially Caucasians. We spend a great deal of time ingesting so much negative garbage, it is no wonder we're dying mentally and physically at a faster rate than anyone else on the planet. Would my grandmother, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, have been able to accomplish any of the feats for which history remembers and celebrates her if Samuel and Patsy had not been her parents? Their strength was her strength. They anchored her in faith. They lit the candle that cursed the darkness, and they helped her to know who God was. That's why she spent her young educational years studying to be a missionary. It was in her heart and in her spirit. It was her driver. Samuel and Patsy McLeod's love for God and family was the spark that ignited the fire in her soul. Her faith is what kept it burning. As an influencer, Mary McLeod Bethune was a visionary. God gave her that gift. Today, that vision is her legacy. Bethune-Cookman University, which was founded in 1904. She founded the National Council of Negro Women in 1935. She merged her school with Cookman Institute in 1923, officially making Bethune-Cookman co-educational. As she grew and developed the college, her state and national influence also grew. Her friendships included the Rockefellers, Thomas A. White, who started White Sewing Machine Company, 
Gamble, of Procter & Gamble, and many, many others who vacationed in the Daytona Beach area. My grandmother became an advisor to four United States presidents. Who would have thought that a little black girl from the backwoods of Maysville, South Carolina, where they grow cotton and tobacco to this day, would be an advisor to four United States presidents. Presidents Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and Harry Truman. President Coolidge and Hoover appointed her to the National Child Welfare Commission. President Roosevelt's administration, she helped to organize the Black Cabinet and was the only female member. This was the case in many of her accomplishments. She was the only woman, or one of very few. Yet men listened to her. They heard what she had to say. They followed her lead. She understood the value of being a woman, and she cherished being a black woman. She was also a presidential advisor on minority affairs and became director of the Division of Negro Affairs for the National Youth Administration under President Roosevelt. This made her the highest ranking African-American civil servant employee in the country. Yes, things were difficult, but she never gave up, she never gave in, and she seldom took no for an answer. She was a modern day influencer. If education and knowledge is the key to freedom, then love is the door that those keys open. Mary McLeod Bethune truly believed in unconditional love of family, of community, of the world. Even of those who did not believe in the same things that she believed. Mary McLeod Bethune believed that love builds. She stated, it is positive and helpful. It is more beneficial than hate. Injuries quickly forgotten quickly pass away. Personally and racially, our enemies must be forgiven. Our aim must be to create a world of fellowship and justice where no man's skin, color, or religion is held against him. Love thy neighbor is a precept that could transform the world if it were universally practiced. It connotes brotherhood and to me. Brotherhood of man is the noblest concept in all human relations. Loving your neighbor means being interracial, interreligious, and international. Those precepts stated in her last will and testament, which was written for Ebony Magazine in 1955, state clearly her heartfelt desire for a world where everyone has equal access, equal opportunity, and not be judged simply by what shows on the outside. She also had a great love for family. You see, family centered her. No matter where she traveled, no matter who was visiting with her at her home, family was always welcome and always had access to her. That meant extended family as well. Many mornings she would sit on her front porch as kids from the neighborhood went to school. Sometimes she would chat with them, ask them what their plans were for the future. I remember my Aunt Bobby saying that as a little girl, she would pass the house and some mornings she would get asked the question, uh, what do you plan to be when you grow up? And she said she seldom had an answer because, of course, her scope of vision at six or seven was very limited. One morning, Mother Dear took her and the other students over to the hospital that she had built for the community, which was named after her mother, Patsy McLeod. And Auntie Bobby said that when she walked in, she saw black nurses for the first time. They had on the angel guard of, of nurses during that time period. 
And she said all of a sudden she knew what her direction and focus would be. Maya Tibabi became one of the most outstanding nurses in the world. She traveled internationally, caring for and teaching nurses how to be the best that they could be. She served our country and our community and always was teaching. She said she got that when Mary McLeod Bethune placed her hand on her head and said, come with me, little girl. I want to show you something. That's who Mary McLeod Bethune was. Family mattered. Community mattered. And she never stopped. She worked until the day she passed away to make the world a better place. She truly believed that loving your neighbor as you love yourself was critical to making community whole, making it safe, and making it a place to raise your children. And she said many times that she felt like the community raised my father, Albert, her only child, because she was so busy with the things that God had placed inside of her that she turned his care over to others, like our cousin Georgia, our cousin Lucille. But there was always that centering. Even when he was away at boarding school, she made sure that she was in contact. And as he grew up, he grew up to be a loving and kind person. The community was always at our house. I don't remember a time when our door was shut or people didn't have access. I remember my dad getting out of his bed in the middle of the night because of a phone call from someone who needed assistance. And he never grumbled, he never complained. And even when he wasn't treated in the manner in which he should have been, he never said a cross word. He was a kind and loving man. Now I'm sure during his heyday, he was quite a fellow because he was quite handsome and he was very smart. But he also understood the world in which his mother lived. He took it upon himself to assist her in building the vision that God had placed within her. Today, much of that vision still exists because of the work that he was willing to put in alongside his mother and the way that she was able to influence the lives of so many people. Love, faith, hope, all a part of the legacy of Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. That's why making this movie is so important because the world that we live in today needs to see her not as a documentary, but as a human being, an ordinary person who was able to do extraordinary things because of her faith, because of her hope, and because of the love that God placed within her spirit. Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, an American icon.